What's going on there guys, Earthmaster here checking in on this beautiful Wednesday evening, January 13th, 2021. It is the date 8.53 p.m. West Coast time here in California, where we got the latest quake on the globe, a 2.5 earthquake striking up here in northern Alaska region, well away from the area of activity we're seeing uh, over the last 24 hours there. 2.5 up there in northern Alaska. For the most part, activity has died down a little bit. You can take a look at the latest flat scale map from the USGS folks there. And you can see a lot of activity has completely, completely died down, at least as far as the uh, Pacific Ring goes over here along the western part and also through the northern part here along the uh, Aleutian Island chain there. Pretty quiet in the activity uh, as far as earthquakes go. Northern California, I know we didn't get to do an update video last night, uh, but they have been seeing a little bit of uh, movement here along the Mendocino Triple Point Junction here uh, and today uh, we got a few earthquakes uh, kicking off there 3.5 well off the uh, the coast there of Eureka out there in the Gorda Ridges the Gorda Escarpment region and also 2.5 there near uh, uh, Petroil Petroil Petro oh man there's that word again I gotta spit it out uh, Petrolia, Petrolia, Petrolia. How's that? So hard to say. Anyway, you get what I'm saying. This right here. Um, beautiful area, no doubt, but very dangerous when it comes to earthquakes out there. Uh, let's go ahead and go back. I need to go back. Yeah. Let's go back seven days here and check out the 2.5. Most of this activity is from, uh, oh, about 30 hours ago, 36 hours ago. <clears throat> Pretty good cluster of quakes out here in this region um, in fact the largest one was a 4.3 right smack dab on this uh this little fault system here this here is kind of the fault region of the uh well you got the pacific plate the juan de fuca plate up here in the gorda escarpment region right smack dab on that line we just seen a, a, a quite a cluster of quakes with that 4.3 being the largest most of the depths of these earthquakes here on the variable side, let's see over here about 20 kilometers, the deepest one here. And, um, you know, they're just, they're uh, well, about 18 kilometers or so for these other ones. So I was kind of watching this area pretty closely there yesterday. This um, kicked up following the uh, larger events there across the Pacific where we've seen, uh, you know, quite a bit of deep movement here along the uh, Solomon Islands, Fiji Islands area and all the larger quakes around the Indonesia area as well. So kind of, I was kind of monitoring that uh, today. Like I said, it's calmed down a little bit, but uh, still some activity in that region as we're seeing there on that map. Uh, like I mentioned, the 3.5 way out there in the ocean at 18 kilometers and also the 2.5 there pretty much right on land uh, south of Eureka area and Fortuna area. Uh, at 18 kilometers so some deeper movement going on out there this is not really fracture type or not uh, surface type area but kind of deeper you know you got the subduction region right here the cascadia subduction zone if you will uh, with the juan de fuca plate uh, diving down underneath the north american plate there checking out the trimmer department uh, today about 26 epicenters mostly confined to the uh, uh, well all throughout the valleys there in oregon I uh, got Salem and uh, looks like Eugene Medford area seen some uh, trimmer department trimmer quakes if you will way down there in the uh, subducting area of the Cascadia subduction zone so not a lot but uh, this movement is definitely uh, uh, worth noting because we normally don't see a whole lot of specific trimmer just confined to this region here in central Oregon so it's interesting to see a little bit take place in this area so we are watching that uh, pretty closely there uh, as far as the rest of Northern California goes pretty quiet uh, no earthquakes really to report around any volcanoes Mount Shasta Mount Lassen pretty quiet um, all other areas quiet as well of course the geysers over here uh, seeing their typical earthquakes in any given day for this region and yeah, Sacramento Valley pretty quiet Sandra's fault a little bit of quakes going on the the uh, microquakes along the creeper creeping section of the San Andreas Fault, that major plate boundary between the North American and the Pacific Plate. 
There can be big ones on that one as well, but uh, to see these little quakes there uh, is very common along the creeping section. Ridgecrest area still seeing uh, some earthquake activity <clears throat> and also the uh, Nevada region as well. A couple small microquakes along the uh, Sierra Nevadas on the eastern side and also into the, uh, looks like just south of the uh, Virginia range there in Nevada, um, outside of Reno, Carson City region, way out there in the desert, a couple microquakes as well. Southern California lighten up a little bit, a return of some small quakes around the Salton Sea area. Just a handful of microquakes and also down south here, uh, just outside of any specific fault area, seeing a little handful of uh, quakes as well. Not specifically on any type of uh, specific fault structures. There is the, uh, what is that, the Yuha Buttes shell, shell beds. Let's go ahead and check that out real quick. I'm, I'm not for sure if I pronounce that correctly or not. You know, it's just me, the master of mispronunciations or pronunciations, pronunciations, right? I even got corrected on that. Uh, it looks like potentially some old lava flows a way long time ago in this area. Uh, not for sure about uh, this region, but looking at the satellite views where this uh, quake activity is taking place, I don't see obviously no fracking. No, uh, nothing like that. So these these earthquakes here stri striking at about 10 kilometers uh, and shallower there in that region. 2.2 being the largest in that uh, sequence of earthquakes right there in Southern California. The nearest fault structure, let's go back over here to the uh, uh, terrain, 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 terrain. Right, you don't want to hear that when you're flying an airplane. <clears throat> Uh, let's see, what we got as far as the nearest fault structure here? Looks like this one right here, the Yuha. Yuha, is that correct? Yuha Wells Fault. And of course you got the uh, Elisnor Fault structure down here. Uh, never heard of this one. I might have to look into that and see. Just a little uh, sensitive area it looks like, you know, with different faults uh, running in different directions there. So a little triangle of hazards there in the future, no doubt. But for now, just a uh, couple small microquakes there in that area. Zooming over here across the country, or at least up here to the uh, uh, Intermountain West region, Oklahoma, or Oklahoma, Idaho, seeing some uh, microquakes there. Yellowstone looking pretty quiet. We'll check out the Yellowstone map real quick here while we're uh, at it. I know quite a few folks messaged me talking about the uh, Yellowstone webcam is back up and running. Um, I do have plans to implement that back into the live stream. Uh, in the near future, just FYI. And also, uh, let's see, so nope, no quakes going on. No uh, magma movement, just some wind events showing up across the uh, the area in Yellowstone and Wyoming, Wyoming region. Everything looks uh, pretty quiet. A-OK -okay up there in the uh, beautiful Yellowstone National Park region. Yeah, what else we got here? Oklahoma, I'm just seeing some small quakes out here, a couple couple small microquakes regional down here in the Puerto Rico area still seeing uh, actually if you look at today's activity it's a lot less than uh, on your average day of earthquakes out here just about 14 no, 13 or 14 earthquakes in this region uh, so kind of dying down a little bit but I'm sure this will pick back up as always it just seems to be like a never-ending swarm down there and some activity down there in the deeper regions of, uh, uh, looks right outside the Andes there, uh, South America region into parts of Argentina. Uh, looks like 240 kilometers for some of these earthquakes there down in the subducting region, Peru Chile, Peru Chile Trench area. Man, you spit it out, spit it out. And, uh, a couple forests kicking off there. Like I say, these earthquakes are, are worthy to watch. Has, uh, some deeper movement going on down here which ultimately is it's kind of a similar uh, uh, subducting area well I wouldn't say similar as uh, the Cascadia because Cascadia is on a, a smaller fault with the Juan de Fuca plate there um, going underneath the North American plate but the subducting uh, dynamics of it very similar uh, with with potential movement downstream there in the deeper areas ultimately uh, increasing uh, back building pressure up here in the uh, lo uh, subducting uh, locked area where they where they subduct right there. 
Uh, let's see what else we got here, folks. Papua New Guinea looking pretty quiet. A couple small earthquakes around there. 5.2 being the largest in the, this region near Indonesia area. Uh, New Zealand looking pretty quiet according to the USGS scale. No noteworthy earthquakes taking place down there. And uh, a couple small quakes out here around the uh, Athens region. Looks like 4.5 near Greece. Other than that, uh, plate tectonics at work, folks. <laughs> Definitely uh, kicking off out there. But uh, it's looking pretty quiet. Just things seem to be dying down at the moment. Uh, what else we got here? Trimmer, we covered that. There's not a whole lot going on in the solar department. It's absolutely quiet. Trimmer, like I mentioned, uh, just some specifics there in the uh, central Oregon, northern and southern part there. Just kind of a, a strange area to see some, uh, some trimmer, you know. But uh, right now, only 26 small epicenters there being recorded. Alrighty, well, we're gonna jump off here, folks. We got some, uh, man, we got some days of 70 degree weather tomorrow here in California. It is not looking good. It's looking more or less like, uh, kind of like springtime. It's supposed to be like 71 and then potentially uh, 73 over the weekend. I mean, what the heck is going on? That's just not good. You can see a dominant high ridge pressure out here. It's kind of dark out here, but uh, jet stream shooting all the way up into the Gulf of Alaska. we got a ridge of high pressure right here. That's going to bring some warmer air up into California and give us temperatures in the 70s here in the valley and also stretching 60s out here along the coast range. So it's kind of warm for this time of the year here in California. So hopefully this swings back down and gives us some some more precipitation because man if we don't get any more storms we are going to be in trouble here in california let me tell you all right folks have a good night uh please stay safe out there and uh, we will talk at you guys another night another day stay safe